I'm just going to repeat what Janet just said to me. I'm on the edge of quite a large precipice. I mean, I guess it'd be 4,000 foot drop. Janet said, don't go any closer to the edge. At least leave the backpack with me so I can have something to eat. <laughs> oh, just cruel. You're cruel. Unbelievable. 30 years of marriage and you get that. She's laughing. She's not joking though. She's desperate for some munchies. So I just got a delivery. I got my vinyl ester uh, for laminating my timber bulkheads. So I'm gonna set up the factory now in here, ready to do a heap of laminating, and I'm gonna bring each small component of bulkhead into the factory and give it one coat of 600 uh, double bias and a layer of peel ply so that I'm re then ready to start tabbing and filleting and the like. So uh, in there, I've also got another roll of 600 CSM and, uh, and another roll of uh, 600 double bias. So there's plenty of stuff in there. There's also some nice gel coat and stuff for the kayaks I've got to build this month. I hate the way they wrap these things in black plastic. You know, that could have all come individually and quite easily. I guess it saved me on freight, but you know, ultimately I've ended up with a pallet that I've got to get rid of and, uh, and all my resin and everything there. So I'm gonna get down in the sun because it'll be cooking in there and uh, time to get it in the factory. It's always good when you get a delivery, I love it. Um, except for when I go to pay the bill. Uh, right, very interesting. Um, we are now into October here in uh, Australia. Uh, obviously around the world as well. But in October in Australia, we uh, start to experience in quite a warming trend. It's uh, a very, very, can be cold, but can be hot. So what invariably the manufacturers now do is particularly and only with vinyl ester. Um, because it's relatively temperature and humidity uh, uh, sensitive, they change the formula. And as of now, we're into summer grade vinyl ester. When I laminated the hull uh, about two years ago, I used a winter grade vinyl ester. Now that vinyl ester is actually designed to set quicker than the summer one. Obviously you want working time and that the issue with vinyls and polyesters is that the uh, the catalyst tends to set them off quite quickly, particularly if you have uh, humidity in the higher range and then uh, there's curing issues because if there's a high range humidity, then the, uh, the catalyst uh, is inhibited and ultimately will never set. So you gotta be very, very careful how you deal with vinyl esters and polyesters. Similarly with uh, with epoxies, but moreover, the uh, the vinyl ester I'm using now is is the summer grade, and it actually uh, sets a little bit slower than the winter grade one. Uh, therefore, I've got a little bit more working time. I was going to use epoxy to laminate my bulkheads, my timber marine grade bulkheads. And because I've used vinyl ester all the way through the hull and you know um, a number of polyester uh, products throughout the modules and everything, um, I've sort of decided in uh, uh, to use vinyl ester to do the bulkheads. And the reason why I've done that is because I'm sticking with the similar system. I have a vinyl ester hull, and then I'm going to have marine ply bulkheads which are then sheathed in vinyl ester and 600 double bias. And then the mating tabbing should also be of the same chemistry. Now, if I were to introduce epoxy to that, I would then have issues going back and adding polyester or vinyl ester additions, such as the modules, um, the composite angles, if I decide to glue those on with a vinyl ester based adhesive. So that's my thinking. And to be honest, uh, vinyl ester is actually a type of epoxy. It, uh, although the only the only main difference is that it shares the same backbone, but what it does have is it has styrene as the main carrier. So the great thing is that that flashes off and allows the catalyst to uh, enact into the resin and the substrate. So nowhere near as strong. It's probably in the mid range in between polyesters and epoxies. Vinyl esters sit about here. Certainly from a price point as well, they're around about two thirds of the cost of epoxy and probably about 80% of the strength. It's not gonna be an issue because my bulkheads are going to be compressive bulkheads anyway, made of plywood and 
uh, sheathed in 600 double bias, which is you know way strong enough for the uh, the boat that I'm building. Given that I've already got 30 mils of foam core and four layers on each side of that foam core, so it's an incredibly strong uh, bridge deck section and hull section. Quite a lot of forward planning happens when I uh, get in and do a big session like I'm about to do over the next few days, and uh, and I've already cleaned out the place. I want it so spotless. I want to give it all a vacuum before I start. I try to keep my dust levels to an absolute minimum. Um, I, I really am careful about uh, contamination of other chemicals, dust. We've got a yard next door that has a forklift that drives around on the road base, and uh, and that dust is just in everything that we have here around this factory. It's up in the hull. It's basically all over my modules that are already in the hull, and uh, and it's basically the winter winds that we've had here have whipped that up and deposited it all over everything. So vacuuming is really important. I'll give it a vacuum and then obviously an acetone wipe. But yeah, these tables here are going to much, pretty much form the basis of my uh, my laminating room for the next few days as you've seen before when I've done my foam and uh, I just need to clean up up there and I've got pretty much two very valuable spaces here to work with. Right, hey, so it's uh it's laminating day. I'm going to laminate these bulkheads, get one layer of 600 double bias on each side and some peel ply. Hopefully we'll get it done, come back this afternoon, put the second layer on. Good thing about uh, vinyl lesser is it will go off in three or four hours, enough for me to be able to flip it over. But uh, importantly with marine ply, especially because you cut it with a saw, um, you've got some rough edges on the, on the edges of the bulkheads that should be so the sanded back, sanding those edges is, is going to enable the cloth to adhere properly and get a good resin penetration into the wood. We want to make sure that we fully saturate all of this wood to ensure that it's sealed. So that, and I know that they're cut correctly, so they're totally sealed before putting in place with a fillet. And then the tabbing, obviously, we don't want any chance of any water ever entering that wood. But uh, for now, I'm just going to sand all the edges back. Coffee time. Aha. Okay, so these uh, bulkheads have to have one layer of 600 double bias on them and then a layer of peel ply. I find that if I roll it out, I get a much better result than trying to flop it down um, onto onto the uh, the underlying bulkhead. And that way I'll sort of minimise the amount of air bubbles I'm going to get in it. Because you're going to remember that this is actually going to be a tacky surface. I'm actually going to seal this plywood prior to um to put in the actual cloth on i'm going to put a layer of vinyl ester on it let it soak in for a couple of hours and then i'm going to come back and laminate the the uh the cloth on so i'm going to probably have a little bit of a tacky surface so i don't want to be trying to fumble with with cloth trying to put it on dry and then uh, trying to wet it out while i've got masses of air bubbles so being able to roll stuff on makes a big difference particularly with peel ply now it's okay with cloth because you can actually move it but once peel ply goes down you really don't want to be pulling and lifting the uh the substrate up as you're trying to adjust peel ply so once again i'll put peel ply on a roll as well and roll it out at the same time just all these little tricks make a massive difference to the result at the end of the day and uh, and you end up with a much better result you want to try and say any remnants uh, particularly you know two meter long 500 mil wide uh, sections that's just totally uh, wasteful if you're not saving that so it's not hard to save it you just need to cut off before you start putting the resin down because as soon as you get resin on it you throw it away that piece there will be perfect for tabbing for some smaller componentry uh, cupboards shelving anything like that so never throw this stuff away
Okay, so let's discuss the preparation required for plywood bulkheads. Uh, imagine a piece of timber going through a factory and uh, and being laminated with glues and resins and all this sort of stuff, and ultimately uh, multiple layers of of plywood being bonded together with with chemicals. Um, it would stand a reason that when it finally gets to me, i.e., the end user that it's going to have some uh, pretty bizarre coatings on it. It's been transported on trucks, so there could be diesel um, particle all over it. You just don't know what this stuff has had on it. So it's so important first to give it a very light sand. I've done that with all of these bulkheads. And you know, even in the last month where I've had them sitting in the, the boat, getting them cut and everything, there's, there's a likelihood that there's other environmental factors affecting the outside veneers of these timbers. So um, my preparation for a solid cure and a, and a proper lamination of this uh, this bulkhead is firstly to give it a sand, secondly uh, an acetone wipe and you can see the just the crap that I've been able to remove off that just as it sat there, why would you want that in your boat? That's a contaminant, contaminants don't react well with things like vinyl ester and epoxies so the better you can prepare it, the uh, obviously the better result you're going to end up with. So I've given that a wipe, not a, I've given it a dry wipe first and then I've hit it with a light acetone wipe. Now acetone uh, flashes off very quickly so you don't have to worry about that soaking into the wood but what it's actually going to do is remove any contaminant now. So those three pieces of bulkhead now are ready for lamination. Um, the important thing about this is to not just go headlong into it and just put your substrate straight down. I'm going to put a layer of vinyl ester on these and let them soak in for a good hour or so to make sure that all that uh, that resin is is filling the pores of the of the plywood prior and the grain prior to me then laying the substrate down. So it's not just a matter of laminating it straight on like it could do with foam, for instance, because foam's really not going to absorb much at all. This wood will probably soak in about 50% of that, that resin that I'm about to apply, and then I'll let that flash off a little bit, and then I'll come back and do a layer of, uh, of uh, 600 double bias, and then my peel ply, and then be able to come back to Sarvo once it's cured, semi-cured, and it's pretty much green, I'll be able to then flip it over and do the exact on the other sides. Now I'm going to catalyze this first soaking coat uh, at 2% because I want it to go off pretty quickly because I'd like to get the second layer, i.e. the substrate, the 600 double bias, I'd like to get that down before I go off to lunch so that then when I come back 3-4 hours later I can flip it over and, and repeat the process. So uh, one kilo is going to yield a uh, 20 mil of catalyst, so there's 15 mil there. And another five there. So effectively I put 20 mils in for one litre or one kilo of, uh, of resin. Now remembering that this isn't like epoxy, it's not going to take hours to cure. This will take around about one hour before it starts to flash off. And then uh, within two or three hours the surface is workable again. So really, you'll notice also that uh, I started off with a purple material, look at how instantly that's, uh, that's catalyzed to green. It has a color indicator, as soon as you mix catalyst with it, it will go off. Now I'm just going to let that sit for about five minutes, let all the gases and everything happen and let it basically catalyze and, and then I'm just going to roll it straight out, it's that simple. Alright, about five minutes or so, really green and that's, uh, that's the indication that vinyl ester has, has catalyzed and uh, basically Ready to go. Okay, so it's been about uh, two and a half hours since I laid this down and uh, essentially it's basically given it some time to really soak into that. Particularly around the edges where you've got end grain exposed, I mean it's very, very important to seal that. Obviously you don't want any moisture soaking into it. Now I've bought marine grade ply, and I take that with a grain of salt these days because some of the stuff that you see is coming out of these factories is just, just not marine grade, particularly when you're, uh, you're buying it from unknown sources. I do try to buy from a good supplier, but as you've found before when I was scarfing that uh, 
those uh, bulk heads earlier on is that there are voids unless you're going to spend 300 bucks a sheet you're just not going to get it but yeah so that's had a couple of hours where it's had a chance to soak in I'm now going to laminate them with uh, the 600 double bias and, you, and it's funny you know I've been away for about two months and I haven't had the smell of resin and uh, wow it's strong and that's vinyl ester which is about 20% less VOCs than polyester so that uh, styrene is flashing off I've got a fan going up in the back there I always run a fan whenever I'm uh, laminating because that enables the styrene to flash off and you know and dissipate that uh, that creates that chemical reaction for catalyzing so there's a whole lot of things that are going on in there um, over the last couple of hours and now it's basically just tacky it's ready for laminating Okay, you can see that I've, um, I've dry laid that and what I've also done is I've trimmed it for the most part within about an inch of all of the edges. You don't want it overlapping because as you go to laminate it, what's invariably going to happen is you're going to end up with uh, bridging where the, the, the weight of the cloth's actually creating a rise and a small gap in between the edge of the bulkhead and the resin and you'll end up with a, uh, a, a false uh, lamination. So always trim it within an inch or so and then you won't end up with too much weight bearing down on the edge of that uh, on the edge of that thing. I'll roll the resin into it straight away and then I can peel apply and it's done. So around three and a half to four hours ago, I finished laminating these bulkheads here. Um, generally, after that time, you know, you'd still consider this to be very green. It's going to take about two days for this to cure. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip them over. Because they've cured hard, I can now flip them over and do the reverse side and get them all done in one day. And the beauty of uh, vinyl ester, unlike epoxy and uh, polyesters and vinyl esters, is generally if you can get the catalyst jacked up a little bit you can actually work with it a lot quicker and that's uh, one of the main advantages of the system um, I will say though that uh, um, you've still got to be careful on the margins where the the vinyl ester is leaning over the uh, or the, so the substrates leaning over the timber because you don't want to mark that or damage it so you've got to be careful you need to lift it all in one piece flip it over and not uh, rest it down on this uh, excess edge because if you do you could possibly end up with um, with uh, separation from the substrates so all right so now I'm going to wear some gloves to turn them over because they are still a little bit tacky and uh, obviously that tackiness, you know, you try to avoid getting any of this sort of stuff on your skin. Most of the styrene's now disappeared. It's uh, sort of vaporized off. And in fact, vinyl ester has a, uh, a considerably less styrene in it than polyester. So in a perfect world, um, I wouldn't have to deal with this. But, um, you know, because I was sitting on plastic, obviously resin's soaked in underneath. I'm gonna have to sand all of that off uh, pretty quickly, it'll come off pretty quickly because it's still pretty green. But the key is you've got to get that off, or you're not going to get a nice um, level surface. It's not too bad on this one, but that one's actually particularly bad because the plastic was a bit crumpled. But yeah, that's that is an issue. 
as luck would have it, um, it's still green enough that I'm having to scrape it off. So, you know, that's uh, more luck than good management. But, you know, I'll take it where I can get it. I'd call that a pretty successful day. I've got uh, four bulkheads laminated here with the uh, 600 dB. Um, flipped them over and realised I had to give them a bit of a sand. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of that resin had dripped underneath the plastic. And, you know, that's just the way it is. So I've spent a lot of time cleaning them up because I want to have perfect edges on these when I go to tab and fill them. But, uh, yeah, I had a couple of people drop by, had a couple of conversations. So it's now 5 p.m., um, what I've done in, in preference to doing the lamination today, I'm going to let them cure overnight. Um, I've basically cut all the cloth. I'm essentially ready to fire off the first thing I get in the morning. So or when I arrive in the morning. So the other thing I'll do is I generally get all my tools ready. I get my resins all ready. I'm uh, pretty much ready and packed for the, the, uh, the start in the morning. And then I'll get these nailed within a couple of hours and then I can get on with other things. I've got a few things I've got to get done up on the mould. And yeah, that's... The structure of my day can often change with a couple of conversations and uh, and you know a couple of phone calls with work, but that's the reality of building boats. Don't think you're going to get something done when you think you're going to get it done because it'll often take four times longer. Um, the reality is you just got to get on and do as much as you can and keep ticking away. Now motivation's a bit of a difficult thing for for some. It's not so much a difficult thing for me. I tend to not struggle too much with motivation. I get up in the morning, I generally fire, but. Uh, you know, after just coming back from a uh, five weeks holiday and a bit of work overseas, uh, yes, um, a little bit slower. I'm not firing on all pistons. I, uh, I feel pretty good, but I'm just not uh, getting on top of it. I'm, I like a good chat, and uh, and we have a lot of guys just wander through here throughout the day, and uh, and it can certainly take its toll on the workload. So we've been in Austria about an hour and our GPS took us on this man wild road along the river that apparently was closed but uh, you were okay. <laughs> it was quite an interesting drive. Right, uh, Left hand drive in a manual um, is interesting. You tend to go for the gear stick on the left the whole time being an Aussie or a, a Brit. But uh, Janet's in there doing the contacts but check out the scene. What a day. It's just beautiful here. We're having a ball. Oh no, I wanted photos. <laughs> Check this out. Yeah. It's like light speed. <laughs> About to be launched into the universe. I think we're in love with our new uh, destination. I think we'll be coming back to live here now, Jan. It's just the problem is it's going to be a bit hard to get the yacht over that hill. <laughs> I might have to make 50 boats to be able to pay for this one, for this house here. Christ, it's expensive. It's beautiful. We arrived in Hallstatt last night, absolutely stunning place. So we're here in Obertron, which is where the uh, the cable car goes up to the top of the mountains to the infamous five fingers that overlook the lake. So can't wait for that. It's, uh, I think it's about 4,000 feet to the top. So hanging out, waiting on my coffee and uh, we're about to go up on the first trip of the day. Gotta love a good cable car ride. Check out this one. There's three stages or Yes, three stages. So for all you Aussie chuffers, six euros, that's 10 bucks a packet. At home, it's over $45 a packet. That just goes to show you what tax does. My God, that encourages you to smoke. That's when an iceberg farts. Pretty incredible. 
What do you reckon, hon? Oh, it's beautiful. We can stand at that lodge, on it, can I? Can you? Yeah. That glacier over there. This glacier up here. That is amazing. I've almost got the place to ourselves. I can't believe how quiet it is. Travelling outside the season is always good, isn't it? Do you know what I love about it? There's no massive signs telling us there's a 4,000 foot drop like you'd have in Australia. There's a little handrail up here that's like hardly worth putting up. Like we'd have a 10 foot high fence for the nanny state of Australia. So we're actually in Australia without the alia. I think that's one of the best things I've ever seen. Look at this guy. Wow. Alstat, what a place, eh? Hey, Sam, hey, your mum's peeking down here. She's not sure if she wants to go out. She's got a bit of your problem. Reckon I can get her out there? Oh, I reckon. I reckon I can shove her out. No way, I'm going out there. Yeah, of course I am. I'm not even worried about it. I want to go out on that diving board. Go! Just go. Just walk out. Go out on the glass one. Go on. Oh, you'll be right. Go out on the mesh one. Well, coming on the mesh one is better. I'm in the hole in it. Oh, over here. Just don't fall down that hole. Oh, you be right. Oh, yes. Fine, How good is that? Right. <laughs> Even I'm a bit sketchy, Eddie. Uh. <laughs> like <laughs> God, why am I shaking? I'm not normally shaking. This normally doesn't worry me. Oh shit, that glass just cracked. <laughs> I think I might just inspect these welds. Yeah, it looks like bird shit, that one. They need to get a good welder on here, I'm going to trust it. <laughs> Tell you what, what do you reckon about these welds, everyone? I think, um, Doug, you'd be, you'd be pretty critical of that. And I'm like 4,000 feet up off this thing, so, you know, <laughs> it's a bit sketchy. Now, for an Aussie to uh, come to a place like this, it's pretty spectacular for us because we just simply don't have mountains like this. Where our snowy mountains are you know, 1,700 metres at maximum, whereas this was over 3,000 metres, I think, the top of this mountain here. And watching those paragliders, you know, just using the wind and those thermals that were that were coming up off the lake below, just just spectacular day. And we had an absolute ball. Um, it was a great way to kick off our European trip after our time in Munich. And uh, we had a couple of days here and then headed off uh, down to Slovenia, which I'll put a bit of, uh, of that in our next uh, video because we absolutely love this trip. Janet's happy anywhere it is. I'm not around. <laughs> I've been hassling her because I take a lot of video and it just annoys the shit out of her. <laughs> It doesn't, honey. It's amazing how you tell me to stop talking. You've never stopped talking. I have to comment. I have to narrate. You don't. I'm just going to repeat what Janet just said to me. I'm on the edge of quite a large precipice. I mean, I guess it'd be 4,000 foot drop. Janet said, don't go any closer to the edge. At least leave the backpack with me so I can have something to eat. <laughs> oh, just cruel. You're cruel. Unbelievable, I mean, 30 years of marriage and you get that. And she's laughing, she's not joking though. She's desperate for some munchies.